today. I don't hear anything. Uh, no, me either. I'm not sure. Uh, Malika, are you just still uh, prepping and letting folks come in? Hi. Uh, yes, I'm just waiting uh, for another minute to see that other people join in. And we can get Sounds started. good. Perfect. All right, with three minutes in, I think we can get started now. All right. Uh, hi, everyone. Let's start with uh, have any updates from Daniel. So um, the main updates that I'd want to say is that I think that we are um, we're getting ready for sort of the next big um, reorganize and, and move forward. So over the next couple of days, we'll be getting in touch with the team leads for each of the different teams, um, finding out a little bit about um, where things are at, especially around what are the existing and upcoming uh, sort of think of them as products and services that we're gonna, gonna have to, to offer to, to folks in, in the different communities that we're trying to serve. Um, and then probably Monday, we'll try to um, to do a bigger call out for people to, to, to be joining us on the daily call. Um, we're, we're again, working on that products and services sheet a little bit. Um, and yeah, I think that's that's the, the main piece that I'd have to say. I think Ogala, you've been much more involved uh, in the last little while in sort of getting the day-to-day the -day communication pieces uh, moving. Anything there that you wanna share? Um, let's see, not, not a whole lot. Um, I, we got started with the CET uh, meetings and um, I, I hosted one last, last week and uh, Mike also tried to host one on Friday, uh, but I think being Friday, no one, uh, no one was able to jump on the, on the call. Um, but we figured that maybe it's not uh, necessary to have, the, um, to have the call every day, but maybe like twice a week. Um, at least, at least for starting out. Um, so I think tomorrow morning I'll be able to do the 10 um, to um, host a call. And yeah, I think so far, the, the, like you mentioned, the Google Drive, um, the doc is available and I think accessible to everyone. Um, so maybe just pushing it out there so people know that it's there and um, they can sign up. Because um, I think right now there's, um, there's no one um, on there. 
yeah, nothing, nothing much else to update on. I'm still waiting to hear back from the from the PR um, uh, firm we contacted. Um, also, when Daniel, when you uh, go around to the different team leads, um, I don't know if you'll be having like calls or just like how you're going to do that. But if you're doing it through calls, um, I'd love to jump on those calls that way I can kind of get a better understanding of what's going on um and that'll definitely help me with uh following up with the other uh, like other organizations and companies um we have lined up um but yeah right now it's just like there's an ample um pool of like different companies and organizations that are coming up on the radar it's just a matter of like creating synergy with them and figuring out how um, they can help us and vice versa Perfect. Um, yeah. Um, a couple other, I'll probably put this into the help needed area, but, um, I'd love to get a bit of help, um, scraping through our, our, you know, partnerships channel and making sure that we're getting each of those adequately captured onto the Trello board. Um, mm -hmm. and then once we, that, we can be looking at sort of prioritizing those and moving some of those forward, because there's a lot of great contacts there that we should be sort of, uh, moving on. Before we do that, we really do need to get that list of sort of that, that products and services piece together for the ones that are potential clients, as it were, people who could uh, who could benefit from, yeah. from using them. I've just been using partnerships as a dumping ground when I find something interesting, like the partnership channel. I'm just like, that could be interesting. I'll look at that. Yeah. Yeah. Point. Yeah. <laughs> finding interesting things that I don't have enough time to deal with so I don't want to lose them <laughs> and I don't want to have more tabs it's literally sometimes my solution to just get rid of tabs I'm like I opened 50 tabs and yeah. you know, I'm just going to put them somewhere else that someone else can see so then I'm I'm not relying on me to remember to get around to them we, we need to solve yeah. that guys to have that uh, because like every day you come up with different things you think like oh this might be a great idea like i have i usually like send emails to myself but it is good to just have a, the channel where we can um like dump things on and whoever's available to look at them can. it's like ideas or something yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It's, it's just because, well it don't get used that much so it's just like i'm just using it as my dumping ground until you know yeah, you that's great ideas channel let's not make more channels I've got 90 <laughs> channels or something. Oh. Oh, I, I also just... Here's the thing that Slack doesn't solve for, for us is the actual sorting of channels. I wish they would bubble up but by their frequency of usage because mm -hmm. essentially like there are channels that are at the top but they're not really used anymore for, for me. Alphabet, they're alphabetical and in groups. I group mine but they're still... Alphabetical. Yeah, it requires regrouping like every week because Things yeah, I have, to, I have to move things around and restructure things. Um, yeah, it's Slack. I mean, I'd like groups and groups personally, but, you know, I'm weird. I also just want to note the high watermark that we've reached today of actually having three Artercoolians on the call, which is, uh, which is great. And hey, we've been for a congrats. while. So. Congrats, congrats. I won't mind, but I'm actually logged into my account. I was surprised by this. I was like... This is this should be my name. It shouldn't be artists today, but for some reason it is. Um, moving on. Um, do we have any updates, Tyler, from the human resources? Bit? Um, other than I relabeled and did all this sheet on the left-hand side because it was like messy. Um, I'm I'm now going through the database looking because I've been looking for someone to, to see also I'm just trying to go through and find notes and I've been starting to make more user groups like there's a user group for MD literally our medical people with um, and there's only about six in there but it is a way of notifying all six of them in one hit it's just the user groups are um, I'm just constantly trying to sort things and structure things, and work out how to structure. I came across, um, somebody talked about this called evidence. Um, 
search yeah. management for so I don't know if that's something we should what is it just mean? It's the best of others of world. I'm sorry, what? No. Am I breaking up? Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Uh, uh, maybe I'm used to Tyler and muting of, of the voice. Probably should just Okay. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't really, there's, in regards to like, um, I don't, there's nothing really in human resources that I can yeah. say is developed uh, and right now. I, I onboarded and had a call with uh, Jasper yesterday and she's an HR person. We'll also have the Rockefeller University HR person, but we kind of need to give them more guidance on how they can help. And I had a call with Jasper. I feel that I gave it pretty good context. Obviously, um, it depends on whether she is able to kind of formulate something that she can commit to. So let's see if she comes back with some uh, some proposal. But yeah. I explained to her the, the actual challenge of the fact that we have so many people that are willing to help and we frequently need their help. But it's just like, how do we connect those pieces without me going to email and emailing people from from the sheet? One one of the yeah. next things that I think would be huge that we need to figure out. You know, we have our um, our team roster that has the needs lit, uh, or the skills rather that are listed there. We have the cool script that Amazon made us uh, that makes the help needed uh, channel run. Um, if we can figure a way to link those two pieces. So that as soon as someone puts in uh, something that needs a specific skill set, have it an easy way for people to have opted in or out. Maybe it's just something on their Slack profile that they put on. Um, so that if a skill is post or if a task is posted under help needed that needs NLP, that anybody who has said I'm available and who has that skill there, it gets blasted out to those set of people. Because right now we're relying on people uh, popping by that channel. Um, and, that, and I think we need something that's more active and less passive to, to help get people more engaged. I can see what you're getting at with that. Yeah, it's just, I mean, we, um, Bianca's currently trying to work out um, a more effective skill tree, skill database system. And if that can maybe be more effective with um, Airtable database, might be something that we could work a bit better than like a, a spreadsheet. Because I'm feeling yeah. like the spreadsheet kinda, is a limitation. We kind of need to move away from interfacing with spreadsheet. So basically yeah. we need a system where we just never look at the sheet and yeah. it just works as the database. Because if you take the analogy of web apps, like you never go into database to actually like make use of the data. It's always some interface, some something that connects data points for you. So we have Which is, to- Yeah, if, once we've got this, she's already built, she's building it right, right now, this um, Airtable version of what we've got so far. But once it's an Airtable version, it's gonna be a much more, we, we'd be more likely to be able to build, yeah, a web, interface version that's going to be able to use that as a as, as a system yeah I rather, kind of than, that, rather than a spreadsheet because that's yeah. just yeah plunking. kind of help needed on one side and then just dropping people that are you know relevant like automatically pulled by keywords for help needed things just dropping them that automatically sends emails to them and they confirm by clicking link and they get yeah. pulled into that something like that sounds super if... and ambitious but it, it feels like we need it uh, guys, all, you ever, like, all you ever suggest is ambitious. You never come up with something that's like, oh, that's five minutes. It's always like, let's just solve the whole world's problems today. It's never, I, never I, wonder if on, I wonder if on Monday we want to see if we could get um, just kind of a quick report back on how that Airtable piece is doing. Because it does feel like that's a huge, a huge <clears> move in the right direction. Uh, and it would probably be good for the team to kind of know what, what the trajectory is with that. Sorry, Slava, you were trying to say something. Yeah, so what I tried to say, um, I think you're talking about some kind of on CRM. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we, yeah. we can in uh, our infrastructure and uh, well, Arthur and uh, us people, you can try to Let's use it. Try. Yeah. I'm, I'm only thing I'm worried about with that is um, data security. Not that it's inex inaccessible, but it has to be limited accessibility because obviously we can't just. No, no, he means like open source CRM that we can yeah. just. Yeah, exactly. yeah. 
And I, I agree. And actually, like, that's, a, I mean, the, the reason why I never use the word CRM is because through my experience of years of building startups, every company wants to build CRM. And that never happens. There's a lot out there. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of them. Yeah, but, but we, we need just specific functionality. Yeah, from, so let's uh, try it and see what sticks. Okay, I can try to do something about that. So tomorrow <laughs> we can talk <laughs> again. So it sounds like probably Slava and Bianca, getting Slava and Bianca talking since she's working in that piece in, in Airtable. We can kind of- Okay, that's that fine. Over. Thanks so much. Um, if you have Maya from Hacktoes in the call, I don't think so. Um, is there anyone else from Risk Hacktoes who is able to provide any updates? It's not really a problem. Uh, I don't think we have done from 2018 either. Uh, Two updates that I'm aware of from Task are that um, one, I think uh, June started with some uh, refactoring of the round one uh, <coughs> round one code on GitHub, and uh, I think there is some uh, progress that we've made from uh, one of those contradictory clean space projects um, in getting annotators, we have one volunteer and we've reached out to Tyler for another volunteer for annotating stuff. Uh, so that's another update, but I don't really have much um, knowledge of what's going on with the other projects. Uh, all right. Um, task ties. Do we have Christine or Demiro on the call? Nope. Sorry. Uh, any updates from Discovery Engine also? Yeah, so there is no update since yesterday, except me making the annotations for yesterday's call. So I'll take those annotations and I'll actually uh, dump them into the daily report as a way to, to explain what, what's happening because we're still formalizing the direction. Okay. All right, daily report, do you mean this sheet? Sorry, what? Uh, did you mean this sheet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That we're... yeah, yeah. It'll, literally, it'll literally get updated. It'll, we'll just copy it over from yesterday's notes into this. All right. Uh, Lucas, I think you're on the call. Any updates on the search engine? Uh, yeah, we have almost all three notebooks for data frame uh, pipeline. But uh, now uh, I'm doing quite a kind of refactoring just to like to make things smaller and faster in terms of a memory footprint because it's uh, for so many data, it won't work even on a bigger uh, machine. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And as far as I know, Slava put also, has put also the uh, v22 already in in mongodb as a, yeah. not as a data frame but as a like as an original data yeah i will tell in my section what i did yeah. okay <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. All right um is, do you need any help with anything nope um, all right do we have anyone from any of the ontology teams? No? Okay. Um, task Geo. I see the last update is that a new team leader has to be identified. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm doing some research to see if I can find people with visualization skills to be able to um, 
if they see if they're interested in it to first join the team and then if they are if they're going to join the team if there's anybody who wants to step up and start leading it I've seen a couple of candidates who seem to be limited on time but we'll have to see it's uh, it's like anything you've got to have the motivation and the skills to be able to do that and you can't really find them very easily it might involve actually actively recruiting someone which is going to be a weird scenario to be in Do you need help with that dialogue or are you serious what you're doing? I've been doing it, well, since I started looking through it for you, I finished off looking for medical people and then once I did that, I was like, oh, well, I'm here and I'll, I'll look for data visualization people. Something I was wondering too as the, um, on our forecasting team is if we should just start trying to onboard uh, data engineers and others to solve our own data needs for the time being um because without like a clear path for it on geo does it even make sense to like continue re relying on them yeah or just... i would recommend start building off uh in parallel uh, because I, I i'm not sure like there might be the like a mixed benefit of waiting for that yeah because okay. even if we do get someone else to lead it um, unless we can get Daniel and Emmanuel to bring them up to speed on exactly what they've built previously, it might end up being like taken apart and rebuilt, rebuilt anyway. So if you start on that process, if nothing else, if there's someone active around, if someone takes over Geo's position, then they'll have two pipelines to work with to build from the, the original one and then whatever you, you, you can start working on. It's not going to be a bad thing to sort of double up on that. But I'm not even sure. I know geo is a pro problem we have to solve, but I'm not even sure how, like, defined separate from data sets as a, as a problem it is, or it's just a subsection of data sets problem of man managing data and bringing it in. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, really, from my perspective, it's just that we need a way of ingesting this time series data in a reliable fashion so then we can then take that time series data, which is saved or cached and just feed it up into our models without, with kind of minimal effort. But we could start like setting that up from our team's perspective to if a uh, geo isn't actively working on it. Mm -hmm. And uh, just for your information, we're also uh, from infrastructure point of view, we are trying to make it more sustainable. So we already added a process that can ingest uh, data from different sources for uh, from G, uh, geo tasks and uh, we have it in dataverse so if you'll open dataverse you will see la last update is coming from this task and it was done automatically so we're just taking snapshot and unfortunately without metadata yet but at least you can use files that uh, we're storing in dataverse okay yeah we'll look at that then too Thanks. yeah of course uh, we are not replacing like uh, team lead but at least we can try to make it more sustainable okay sounds good mm. uh, Slava. yeah so uh on my side uh we're busy with v22 at the moment, and uh, now it's coming. 22, to it's V2022, and uh, I think we have 100,000, uh, 128,000 of uh, or something uh, papers already. <laughs> so it's almost doubled. And that's, that's properly that's properly insane. Like we started at fifty. And it's got silly. I mean, it's it's no, literally... no, no. But, but but in principle, it can be a million and it can be ten million. So infrastructure should yeah. handle it. Good. That, well, I'm not worried about that. It's just the fact that it's. Yeah. I mean, it's one of the things that we have to design. We had to design for it, and we had to plan for it. It's just crazy to think that any one, but any any organization at all could handle 128,000 pieces of research and understand it without a computer to do most of it for you. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, our idea of trying to simplify that is only getting bigger with the more data that's turning up. Yeah, but I would say the most awful thing about this update that it's not sustainable. So fields got changed again, and we have to uh, change our parsers and. Uh, I think, um, well, now it's coming to infrastructure and we have like 50,000 of uh, papers already available in MongoDB from latest update. 
and uh, yeah let, let's see probably tomorrow it will be completely in mongo and uh, uh, you can try to query it now uh, in in our Jupyter notebook and as a thing that uh, we are doing together with Ishan, uh, there is parallel workflow that allows uh, to use MongoDB uh, as a source for uh, affiliation uh, recognition. And he has a process that can do it automatically. So in principle, after we'll finish uh, a setup of pipeline, we'll be able to get all affiliations, uh, let's say in like 24 hours, recognized for all new papers. And uh, yeah, I think it, it can be useful for visualizations because uh, we don't need NLP stuff. We, we, we just need uh, basically a list of affiliations and years to get all these nice maps and uh, probably timelines. So uh, another thing that uh, we are looking into uh, Brandon's process how to connect MongoDB to what Brandon produced before. And uh, there is a great chance that uh, this week we'll finish and uh, we'll be able also to produce uh, spacey enrichments and uh, new entities um, quite quickly. Probably like in, in I don't know, in, in 48 hours, we can handle everything, I believe. So if you have some questions about infrastructure, No questions. So I, I can also tell something about uh, next uh, topic about uh, uh, like um, tools. We already have uh, the Kana tool installed in our infrastructure and uh, we just don't know how to test it. So we are looking forward that people will start to use it. And uh, I think it's task, uh, let me think, VT who is interested, so please contact me and uh, I will provide link because I don't want to, to make it public before it will be tested uh, properly. Yeah. So I see question about MongoDB, so it's uh, 500 GB. Well, it's not a problem because uh, we are running MongoDB on, on uh, uh, Google Cloud and uh, we also have Amazon Cloud. So we can just uh, split different connect, uh, collections and to put in different, uh, different clouds. So it's oh, not- oh, is, is 500 gigabytes gonna be a problem? No, I don't think so. I mean, because I feel like 500 gigabytes of data is a lot of data. I mean, I've seen some of the calculations you've been hitting it. 30 and 40 and 50 gigs, but I feel like 500 gigs is a lot. Let's Megabyte. just load the whole internet into our money. Let's just download, just download it all, yeah. Just be done with it. <laughs> IT crowd black box. Yeah. No, but, but I don't think it, it, it's going to be a problem, to be honest. Uh, we can manage this. Yeah. Reese, megabyte, megabyte. Sorry, megabyte? Well, it's, it's yes, not megabyte, megabyte. because we they're already over, they're definitely already that over 500 megabytes, are you? Is, I, I don't is, understand about megabytes. I think he means document. No? Is that a free account? Or? No, we don't have a free account. It's a, it's a, the... We took uh, the actual open source version and deployed it on our cloud. Yeah, so uh, the way um, uh, how we're doing that, it's a community edition version and it's free. So I don't know about some limitation, to be honest, about 500 MB or GB. And uh, if it's necessary, we can just deploy uh, in uh, new in namespace, uh, next MongoDB, three nodes uh, instance, and uh, it will be separate volume. I don't see any problems. Okay. Thanks, Sarah. Uh, Isaac, how's it going with the forecasting world? Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, we're continuing to begin to write forecasts on the mobility data. Um, we did have actually a couple bugs relating to data and how we were, uh, and how new cases were calculated. Um, so, 
So that, that was a reporting issue. So we're investigating those because those um, completely screwed up some of the predictions. Because um, So we're looking at investigating that. Um, and yeah, that's one of the reasons I want to get the whole data architecture straightened out and like have a good testable end-to-end -end data pipeline. So um, hopefully we don't train on bad data again. Um, but yeah, that, those are the major things um, we're working on. And yeah, as I said, we're, we are working on in integrating those, that full mobility data into forecasts. So then that could hopefully, you know, um, produce actionable insights about how social distancing is affecting the virus spread. Mm -hmm. um, we are working with our epidemiologist, Sir Hay, on that as well, so. Awesome. Thanks, Isaac. Um, other than the infrastructure and uh, data pipeline related stuff, do you need any other help, any blockers? Uh, sorry, I didn't quite hear that. Uh, so other than the infrastructure issues you mentioned, is there anything else that's a potential blocker or any help that you need? No, no, I think the biggest thing, yeah, is just getting our data ingestion figured out um, so then we can focus on the modeling because, uh, yeah, we can't do modeling in any real way until we figure out some of these uh, underlying issues with the data we're receiving, so. Okay. I, think, I think the accuracy of modeling based on data is going to be a problem forever because there's never going to be enough accurate data to be completely reliant on it. It's going to, it's always going to have gaps because there's just so much data to take into account. Like the model's always going to be simplifying something because that's the nature of modeling. So trying to aim for perfection is a, is a crazy idea, but I can definitely see what you mean. You, you want to make it make sense and have at least sensible amount of data that's consistent, but don't, don't, don't bet your house on it ever be perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of those issues are definitely long term and we're looking at strategies for them. Uh, most recently, though, it was just like we saw actually some counties were getting like really negative number of cases. So like in county where there was only 800 cases, the next day it was showing there were like a, a thousand less cases, which makes no sense because that would be a negative net number of cases. Um, so there's obviously something incorrect there that we have to figure out. All right. Thanks, Isaac. Um, we have Ali on the call there. Hi, Ali. How's it going with you? Hey there. Yeah. So, so there is no update. We are still working on uh, on getting the tweets hydrated. No updates uh, uh, as of yet. All right. Any blockers or any help you need? Uh, no, no, just uh, just some some more time to get it all done. Okay. Awesome. Uh, so Malvika, uh, we are uh, Slava, uh, Slava is helping us uh, updating the uploading the tweets to Dataverse. So oh. We, uh, yeah, yeah. So the hydration is completed. Okay. Uh, so. We are having some facing some issues with it. Uh, I think it will get solved by tomorrow. So let's see. Okay. All right. Thanks, Alpha. Uh, moving on. Uh, do we have trial or anyone else from any of the external teams? I don't think anyone from any any external teams in it yet. I've I've mentioned it. Uh, Slava, have you been keeping in? Have you been making contact with Kyle regarding sort of when there's been like breaking changes in the data that's coming in? Is Slava gone now? Have I missed him? Probably. Don't mind him. All right, I think we're already five minutes over. Uh, but for those who can continue, are there any questions? Suggestions, thoughts? All right, then. Let's go. Who was that, Daniel? 
I was just saying thanks so much for uh, for for running the call. It was a good, a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks everybody, guys. Yeah. Thank you. Bye everyone.